welcome in the last session we have seen some introduction of the climate change like uh, causes changes consequence of climate change now in this session we are going to see some impacts of the climate change like uh, uh, especially from the ocean perspective what kind of impacts of climate change so now in this session we are going to cover these two ocean warming and melting of ice so we'll see what is the ocean warming so the name itself it is saying that ocean warming is uh, uh, nothing but uh, continuously warming of the ocean uh, with respect to time to time right so uh, you know as we know that the reason behind this is increased concentration of the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere mainly from uh, burning of the fossil fuels and all right so if you see this image uh, the various uh, uh, this is a global mean temperature difference from 1850 to 1990 pre industrial level so it is the image uh, by old meteorological organization so here all various data sets are um, uh, compiled uh, by the wmo if you see this image the uh, temperature anomalies are continuously raising from time to time if you see how the uh, curve is uh, raising from 1850 to 2025 so by the way you can come to know like a warming is happening so when there is a warming in the atmosphere thereby you can see in the warming in the ocean as well so here i just mentioned few of the scientific reports and uh, uh, scientific studies that are showing that ocean is continuously warming right so the global average temperature uh, in the 2021 was about 1.1 uh, degree celsius above the pre industrial level and moreover the 2021 is the seventh consecutive hottest year right so and according to the ipcc 2013 fifth assessment report the ocean had absorbed more than 93 percent of heat from this greenhouse gases emission since the 1970s if you see the heat content the ocean heat trends if you see from 1993 to 2020 how the scenario looks like the ocean heat content change in the heat content in the upper uh, 700 meters of the ocean from 1993 to 2020 right and according to the state of climate uh, 2019 report uh, the average uh, means if you average the heat content from the top to bottom of the ocean from 1993 to 2020 the heat gain rates are like 0.58 to 0.78 watts per square meter so you can understand how much amount of the heat is adding into the ocean every year so and also you can see the ocean heat content annual ocean heat content compared to the average from 1993 to 2019 if you see from the surface in the surface at the surface in the middle and at the ocean bottom you know from the whole surface to bottom how the heat content is going to add or increase from time to time from since 1915 to 1995 to till now how the ocean heat content is uh, continuously increasing from surface to the bottom of the ocean right and uh, According to the NOAA, it is said that uh, average global sea surface temperature has increased by approximately 0.13 degrees Celsius for decade since last 100 years, right? And few of the modeling studies in IPCC's 2013 report, uh, it is saying that there is likely to be increase in uh, mean global ocean temperatures of 1 to 4 degrees Celsius by 2100. So these are the few facts that are showing that ocean has been continuously warming so what will happen if ocean gets warmer and warmer in future so of course we have a lot of impacts uh, or direct or indirect adverse effects uh, because of this warming so most direct effects that we know that when there is a warming of ocean so the uh, ice sea ice or land ice will melt uh, and gives extra water into the uh, uh, ocean so that thereby you can see sea level rise and then flooding of post coastal flooding and thereby destruction of the coastal habitats these are all kind of uh, direct and indirect effects we have here i just mentioned few of them so one is the um, deoxygenation so deoxygenation is a process uh, in which the reduction a reduction in the amount of oxygen dissolved in the ocean so when there is a reduction in the amount of oxygen a dissolved in the a dissolved oxygen in the ocean we call it as like a deoxygenation that will happen due to this warming ocean warming 
and also another well-known impact that is a sea level rise and this rising sea surface temperature also cause some uh, more severe uh, more uh, uh, powerful uh, cyclones extreme intense cyclones hurricanes typhoons and all and also intensify the El Nino events and associated droughts and floods and it also adversely affects the corals and mangroves because which are very important for the uh, 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 protecting coastlines from uh, extreme events like uh, uh, coastal erosion, flooding, sea level rise, etc. So overall, this uh, uh, ocean warming has uh, a socio-economic and health effects in some regions of the world, right? And coming to the marine life, uh, marine fish, seabirds, and marine mammals all are suffer from the rising temperatures, including high levels of mortality, loss of breeding grounds, and massive ma migrations of species. So especially in case of uh, this marine life, uh, cor coral reefs are one of the most threatened uh, ecosystem by this uh, uh, climate change effects, especially from ocean warming, right? As the ocean continuously, uh, uh, ocean temperatures are continuously rise, then there will be a, a uh, increase in the coral bleaching events that means uh, dying of the coral as the temperature continuously uh, uh, rises then uh, a coral life will be threatened and the risk of the coral will be increased in future right as we have seen uh, since the last couple of years we have seen many coral massive coral bleaching events like dying of the corals because of this rising ocean temperatures right so and this warming, uh, rising ocean temperatures uh, not only cause these impacts, but also cause some uh, um, disease-related uh, impacts like uh, uh, episodic cell disease in American lobster. So uh, because of this warming temperatures, uh, some marine species will get some kind of disease like uh, episodic cell disease. So whenever we consume those uh, diseased marine species, those diseases also will transmit to uh, humans and they will uh, also at risk in the form of infections or kind of thing right so uh, this kind of this many kind of uh, impacts we have so how to control uh, uh, this uh, warming of the ocean by following some of the uh, remedial methods or mitigation strategies and all here i just mentioned a few of them and uh, the first one the limiting greenhouse gases limiting of the greenhouse gases emission so we all know that the one of the major culprit for the global uh, climate change this is a uh, greenhouse gas emissions so we have to reduce and for that we have some commitments uh, called uh, paris agreement on climate change in in this way in this as per this agreement we have to reduce the uh, 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 limiting the global average temperature increase to well below the 2 degrees celsius above the pre-industrial level Otherwise, it cannot uh, control the warming effect or whatever effect, right? So, in, in such a way, we have to control our greenhouse gas emissions and uh, uh, thereby the uh, temperatures, right? And we have also to protect the marine and coastal ecosystems uh, by regulating our human activities in the coastal habitat or coastal regions because these, are, these marine and coastal ecosystems are ecologically, biologically very significant and uh, we also not only to protect but we also have to restore uh, these uh, coastal ecosystems when, wherever uh, these uh, coastal ecosystem got damaged so we have to replace these systems by including artificial uh, building artificial structures such like, um, structures such as rocky pools so that uh, those uh, structures again will be habited for the uh, marine organisms and all because these coastal ecosystems will uh, protect us from the uh, 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 protect the shorelines from different different uh, 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 extreme events like coastal flooding, sea level rise, and all cyclonic storms. So all these extreme events, these coastal ecosystems protect us. Okay, and we have also uh, have some kind of uh, improve some kind of human adaptation methods. Means our government should introduce policies uh, to keep it fish production within a sustainable limits and we have to have some kind of uh, catchy limits and to control the overfishing and we have to i mean eliminating the subsidies to prevent the overfishing and all so this governments and we have to have 
uh, such kind of commitments in controlling these. Uh, we have to have such kind of uh, adaptation uh, uh, methods and all. And moreover, we have to strengthen the scientific research, research because a government should increase the investment in the scientific research to measure and monitor these uh, warming, uh, ocean warming or other impacts of climate change in a well accurate manner so that we can get the more data to uh, uh, analysis further accurately. Because thereby you can get, uh, thereby it is a possible to design and implement further, uh, uh, further mitigation strategies or to implement uh, uh, good uh, uh, remedial measures uh, to uh, control or reduce these impacts of climate change or withstand the consequence of the climate change and all. So now another thing is like melting of ice. Of course, if you see uh, today about 10% of land on the earth uh, is covered with the glacier ice. So in that 90% is Antarctica and 10% is around Greenland ice. So as we know, we have, uh, this is this is some of the incidents that, uh, that are saying like uh, ice is continuously melting, both from the two poles of the earth, like Antarctica and Arctic. Uh, in under the West Antarctic Peninsula is one of the fast warming areas on the Earth. So of course, with some uh, places in the Arctic Circle as well, like a Greenland. So the ice in the Arctic I, Arctic is melting fast. It means uh, if you see this number, you can come to know how much, uh, um, how fast the Arctic ice is melting, like uh, Greenland ice loss <coughs> from 1901 to 1990. 120 billion metric tons per year. So if you see the uh, this uh, rate from 2006 to 2018, it is 330 billions of metric tons per year. And this kind of, uh, this much amount of the ice is getting lost from Greenland from 2006 to 18. That is 330 billion metric tons per year. So you can understand. So now it is the 60, uh, the Arctic is 65% uh, uh, the ice in the Arctic is 65 percent is thinner than uh, it was in the 1975, right? And uh, and another incident happened like uh, of the of an Antarctic ice shelf that is a, a, a large chunk of iceberg, a, a large uh, chunk of ice. It is uh, bigger than uh, uh, Rhode Island, so it was broken off uh, an uh, Antarctic ice shelf. So according to the European Space Agency, the floating mass of that ice extended around uh, uh, over 1,600 square miles uh, um, in a size, making it the largest iceberg in the world. Is happened around. Uh, it was happened around uh, um, and at, uh, on 21 May 2021, right? So and um, another important aspect that the microplastic, because some studies are saying that. Microplastic also playing a role in the melting uh, and rheological behavior of the glacier. So that we have to have control on the using uh, microplastic, I mean plastic also, right? So these are the possible incidents of uh, melting of ice in the both poles, Antarctic and Arctic. And what are the possible impacts that we will get because of this melting of ice or loss of ice? So if you see the rapid glacier melt in Antarctica and Greenland, at all, it, it also influences the ocean currents. Like when the uh, cold ocean water is mixed with the warm water, so it reduces the kinetic energy of the water. That means it reduces the, it slow down the ocean currents, right? And uh, coming to, uh, according to the NASA's Ice Cloud Land Elevation Satellite 2, or ISAT 2, which is launched in uh, 2018, according to this data, between 2003 and 2009, enough ice got melt to raise the sea level by around uh, 14 millimeters from the both Greenland and Antarctic ice from the studies of Smith et al. 2020. So you can understand how much amount of the ice is getting melt uh, from both poles to rise the sea level by 14 millimeters from 2003 to 2009. Okay, and coming to the Greenland ice sheet, it is disappearing four times faster than in, in 2003. Already, it's contributed 20% uh, of the current sea level uh, rise. This much amount of the ice got melt, right? And uh, and scientists, uh, some of the projections from the scientists that uh, if we continue to these greenhouse gas emissions in a same scenario, so by that 
Here by the time 2040, 2040, the uh, Arctic will be the ice free in the summer season. So there in the summer season at Arctic uh, uh, in the Arctic, there will be no ice at all by the time 2040, 2040. So this is the kind of expectations or future projections that we have. And uh, loss of ice uh, not only gives this kind of uh, uh, um, sea level rise and all impacts, but also impacts the, uh, but also affects the uh, marine life over there, like uh, whatever polar marine life we have, like a polar bees, wall, walls, and Arctic foxes, snow, snow, snow owls, and reindeer, and uh, many other species. However, uh, as of now, there is a population reduction in 45% of the chinstrap penguin colonies since 1980s. And of course, uh, starving and uh, extinction of polar bear by the sea loss is already started. So as this ocean is uh, warming and uh, resultant melting of ice, melting of ice continues further uh, with the same rate or uh, increasing rate, then uh, at one point of time, you won't see any kind of polar bears and all. It will be extinct. Right, so because a polar ice melt not only uh, contributes to the sea level rise but also uh, enhance the uh, speed of the uh, melting of ice. Because if there is a ice, sea ice, uh, because uh, albedo will be very high, reflect because it reflects the more amount of sunlight back to the space. If there is no sea, uh, sea ice or a land ice, then uh, albedo will be less, it absorbs the more sunlight, thereby it uh, absorbs the more heat. Then again, it uh, 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 enhances the melting of ice because uh, it has a more heat and more warming, right? So, by the way, there are these kind of uh, many impacts of uh, melting of ice. So, some of the um, remedial measures that we should follow to control this and uh, control the causes of this melting of ice and all. The main and foremost uh, for every global climate uh, change causes, we have to. Uh, uh, and this is the one of the main and major main major and common practice that we have to do for every impact of climate change that is the reducing of greenhouse gases as per the uh, agreements that we made on Paris agreement IUC and IPCC whatever international national organizations that we set um, a commitment or agreement to reduce these greenhouse gases accordingly we have to do and if you see uh, I, as i said like uh, how much amount of the ice is getting lost from time to time if you see, this is the annual Arctic sea ice minimum area from 1975 to 2020. If you see the minimum area value and the 1970, if you see the value is here, uh, more than uh, 6 million uh, kilometer square. Now it, if you see, it is around uh, uh, more than 3. So this much amount of the uh, sea loss, uh, sea got, I mean sea ice got, sea ice or land ice got lost uh, uh, in Arctic. Arctic sea ice got lost uh, during the entire span of 1975 to 2020, right? So like that, another uh, uh, remedy that we can say, uh, mitigation. So since as, I, as we studied that uh, microplastic also doing some um, a role in the uh, melting of uh, uh, ice, so we have to use the, uh, um, we have to follow the uh, slogan called reduce, reuse, recycle while using the uh, plastic, right? So, and uh, some other organization called uh, ICE991 has come up with one uh, strategy that uh, scattering tiny glass spheres across the parts of Arctic to reflect more sunlight back to into the black back into the space means to enhance the albedo of the sea ice by putting some kind of uh, glassy spheres across the whole part of the Arctic ice so the more amount of the sunlight reflects back to the space because of the glassy spheres and all or the arctic ice right so these are some kind of um, uh, remedial methods that we have to control somehow the impacts of climate change and uh, 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 it not let to happen and uh, we all like organizations and governments all in collaboration with all we have to act accordingly and urgently to protect this uh, uh, to protect uh, and uh, to control all these causes of uh, climate change especially uh, to control the loss of melting of ice loss of ice so because uh, as this uh, as the loss of ice continues further in a severe manner so it will also open it, some ways to 
uh, previously inaccessible areas to uh, 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 to activity activities such as uh, shipping, boat and trawl fishing, oil exploration. This again, this kind of if give if the melting of ice gives this kind of access to uh, this kind of activities over there. Again, it will the the effect will be more devastated. So for that, uh, these are not let to happen. We have to all organizations, all every uh, um, governments and private sectors mutually in collaboration. We have to act accordingly, urgently to control this uh, uh, impact of the melting of ice to this uh, um, by the process of called uh, climate change, right? In the further sessions, we will see the next uh, impact of the uh, climate change. Okay.